So the number one is we're going to repeat what we say every year. And my Hakdama every year is the same Hakdama. That the first time I spoke about this was at a Pesach program in California. I did a Pesach program with Betsy Schweitzer and Shmuel Ayan. And I was like the, the rabbi, the scholar in residence. So I gave a drasha, Seder, Pesach Seder night, <coughs> before davening. But at the end of what I said, they wanted to lynch me. People were very, very upset. And I began by saying that they should take all their notes, all the cautious that the kids have. Why does the Manish, the God to say this? Why is it that? And throw it out. It's anti-Jewish. It has nothing to do with Judaism. <coughs> and they should not let the kids ask a word or this or that. You shouldn't let them do any of that. Instead, right, so your kid comes home, you're a little older, but your kid comes home with notes and uh, they learn the Agada and, and, and you have to reply to my God, then this I got, then that I got. It's all junk. Throw it out. Why is it junk? You tell me, why is it junk? I don't know. Right now, I'm almost walking out. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> why, why, why is it junk? Because basically, it's the basic of Sabbath's plan. Why all this hula boo? It distracts from the core message <clears throat> of knowing who we are. You'd see us, Mitzrayim, Sipri, you'd see us, Mitzrayim, knowing the story, knowing what happened knowing who we are as a people, how we became a people, and knowing our place in the world. And all these things, <coughs> they turn the Seder night into one more Bismedrish. And this is the second point. The Seder night is the anti Bismedrish of Judaism. What's the Bismedrish? I tell you something, you have a kasha. Why'd you say this? Why'd you say that? It's not experiential learning. The, the purpose of a bismedrish, they say a joke, probably a true joke, that in Brisk they didn't let the kids go to the biblical zoo in Matrista. Because they don't want the kid to see an ox and say, oh, this is the Shorsh Naga Chasapara. The Shorsh Naga Chasapara is a, is a, is a demos in halacha. It's a concept, it's an understanding of how halacha works. And when you start associating it with the ox, it gets dragged down into this earth. Almost like other Mauritian. What was other Mauritian supposed to do? So we're going to learn Tyra. And through Tyra, through Atsilus, through, <coughs> through that level of Ruchnius, he would encounter Ran, Taiv, and all that, but it wouldn't be part of his soul. So in Bristol, they wouldn't let them go see the. Uh, the Shorsh Naga Chasapara. They wouldn't let him go to the zoo. I had to call him for Zvochim and Manu. That's also, those are concepts, those are Hechrezachen, and the kid is just going to see an ox, he's associated with an ox. Now, I don't know if it's true or not. I was once by Rebbe Landau, and they were having a discussion about how a press works, the gas, you know, the, the, the olive press, the wine press. So somebody in the room said, you know, there's an ancient press they found up near Zichron Yankov somewhere that's, uh, whatever, 2,000 years old, 1,500 years old. And he said, let's go see it. So they got in a cab, and he went up to see it, because they're going through the halachas and understanding how the gas works, seeing is nothing like seeing it. But the base medrash, and so much of Yiddishkeit, is about this intellectual, high-level, not getting down and dirty with the goof side, of Eilam Haza. And the Seder night is completely visual. What do we usually say about the visual? It's a guy. The, the eyes lead, they're not the windows to the soul, the Goyim say that. What do we say about the visual? That the visual leads the Yetzirah. The person sees and his heart wants. That was, they figured that out before the modern day world of advertising and online and clicks and all that, eyeball clicks. Chazal said, you see something, you want it, says, What's the juxtaposition of Lavavchem Be'enechem? It's Lavavchem, we understand. The guy goes and he makes a mistake. Emotional mistakes are a big source of, of, uh, of stress for people, big source of, of uh, 
misguidance. Emotional mistakes. Making decisions based on emotions. Yeah, we, we're, it's interesting. We're trying to do a deal this week, and, and one of the guys got, got very involved emotionally in the emotions of the deal. And there's four of us in this thing, and the other three of us telling him, guys, it's just, it's just a deal. Don't get involved in the whole taram around it. And we could see how it's clouding his judgment. And the other side wanted us to fund before we had a contract. So three, two out of the four were ready to fund. I said, I'm, not, I'm out of the deal. I'm not going to fund without a contract. So we kept getting closer and closer to the funding deadline. And they said, if we don't meet the deadline, then we're out of the deal. And this guy wanted to fund, and he was emotionally connected. I said, I'm not funding. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to get emotionally involved. It's very hard. I said, we understand. But we so the eyes are really the way to evoke desire in a human being. And the whole Seder night is really a play. Right? It's, it's a play. You set up the scene. The, the, the steps of the Seder night, Kadesh, Orchats, Karpats, Yachats, each of them is what we would call in English the act of a play. So Act one, act two, act three, act four. And we are reenacting the events of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. We're going through it. And we have all these visual things. So the kid sees, he sees the mar, he sees the matzah, manashtana. It's all visually oriented. But it's really not an intellectual pursuit. It's not trying to refine ideas to parse something that we don't know from the ideas. Now, when I say it's junk and it's not Judaism, I'm speaking of form I don't really mean that. Of course, it has a place for it. Is that but, why the Vigadatel of Bincha is here? It says Vigadatel of Bincha, and like the rabbi just said, it's not to take something out of it. It's just the play of it, where when you tell your something, when you tell your kid something, you keep it simple. You want to, you want to give them the visual. You want to keep it simple. Yeah, you want to keep it simple, and you want them to emotionally connect which the eyes do, the, the, the play acting do. We, we, we go with, we, we dress up like Cheros, we dress like Malachem, we have the matzah to represent Lechem Oini. We have the whole Seder night is all oriented around reenacting and reliving the events of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. My, my question is, where else, is there anywhere else in the Torah where we have a fear of a God? of the God of Bincha, and is there also anywhere else in the Torah where we're reenacting, where, where, where we're making no, a play? No, the only, the only thing is that some, some people do on Shvi Yishal Pesach, they, they do a little mini Seder, they, you know, they cross the water, they cross the Yom, but, but, but on Shavuos, what do you do on Shavuos? You know, there's no, there's no Kailus of Brokim, and there's no little Harsin at your table. It also doesn't say by Shavuos, the God of Bincha. So my question is, is the play because of the Vayar God to Levincha? God to Levincha is the source of, of, of conveying to your children. That's the source for what we do on the Seder night. Kenegar Arba Bonham, the Torah talks about four children. So the Torah makes it clear that the Torah wants us to be connecting emotionally to the events. And even the Dom on the, on the mezuzahs, was like was a way of separating themselves from the Mitzrayim, going back to the original events that you'd see as Mitzrayim. So they had to take the Avoid Zorah of the Mitzrayim, which was sacred. I mean, if you did that in India today, they, with a cow, they would kill you. I mean, you know, their cows are holy. Holy cow comes from somewhere. The mom is holy. And you're taking them, and you're holding them by your, you're holding them by your bed, and you're making them, you're making them. And then you, you 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 kill it and you smear the blood on the walls and it's like you're making very clear that you're disconnecting from the Avoid Zara and you're connecting to something else. But the, I think the best outcome for a Seder night is where your kids and you feel really emotionally connected to the events of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. You feel it's a part of you, you feel you feel that this is something that really happened to me. As we say, that feeling that as if you were there to feel the Aini, to feel the the, the, the Inui,
to feel the tsar, to feel the redemption, to feel the sense of hope. And these emotions we deal with all the time, just we're such a non-emotional generation that when we talk about depression and hope and all that, we're like, we try not to get too close to it. We try to, we try to live very stable Western lives. So we don't want to talk about what life looks like with how bad things are and how good they can get and what hope means and all that. So if you go to the average from guy, you ask him what's the state of the world today, it's okay, you know, a little SARS, whatever, it's okay. We're in de- we live in denial of the world around us. We always do, all human beings do. And then we also don't really connect to a real emotional feeling of hope, of cheros, the feeling of that a Kodesh Baruch Hu will redeem us and chose us, or his special nation at all. So the goal of the Seder night is to set a stage, set a theatrical stage, and to reenact and relive, and try to reenact it so much that you immerse yourself in the events, and you feel like you're living these events, and you have all the visual cues to remind you and to connect you to what happened. And to understand one point, we're the Amma Nifchar, we were in Mitzrayim, we were not in the greatest of, stage, of, of, of stages of, of existence, and we the Amen of HaKadosh Baruch Hu redeemed us and he chose us as his people and we're bound to a very special relationship with him for, uh, for all eternity, for all history. And we have a bris between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we're meant to live in a relationship with, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So that's really the emotions of it. Not the cautious, why, why, does, and why does it say this or why does it say that or whatever. All that is really distracting. And if you make it into another classroom, another brisk of shir, I don't mean brisk of shir, but if you make it another shir, then, then you've completely distracted your children from the essence of what you're trying to do. Well, I think emotion, in the human being, you know, emotional misguidance is much more powerful than, than visual misguidance. It is, but isn't, doesn't the eye attract? Doesn't, this, doesn't it, it get started by the eye? Everything affects each other, but emotional emotional uh, insecurity. Emotional insecurities are very deep. Like Surah Levavchem is essentially telling you that what your heart wants, just because your heart wants it, it doesn't make it right. Because your heart wants something. There's no relationship to, no, but, to, to uh, what's uh, right. But I'm, I'm referring to when, when I learned that Shirach Lachar Nechem is according to Taivis. The Taivis starts with the eye. Well, I that's, that's the Nechem. That's not Lavach. And Nechem is yeah, the Taivis. Yeah, it starts with the eye. But no, but, it starts with the eye. First you see it. Right, it starts process. with the eye and then you and go so to the heart. Wants it. So my question is, why, was, why is Shirach Lachar first? Why the Lachar first? And then I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just see... That. I see the heart as more central to the human being. The emotions, the heart is a metaphor for the emotions of the human being are far more central to people going on or off what they, where they want to head, head to in life. I don't know why they want to reach that way. So it takes a little bit of focus to have everybody put away all that stuff. And what I did every year uh, till a few years ago was I had my mother-in-law would come to the was at the Seder with us. She survived Hitler and Stalin. So by I would ask her to tell her, her story to the kids. Because I said how, how would you know? And then we would go through a list of enemies of the Jewish people and say like, oh that's a new enemy. I remember when Hamas started it was a new enemy. It didn't exist. One day, it popped up Hamas. One day, ISIS popped up. No one heard of ISIS before. All these new groups were popping up. And today, you have campus. You have woke, DEI. These are new, new threats representing the same thing. of But it's not just against the Jews. It's against humanity. Right. Well, it's against the presence of God in the world. And yeah. the presence of God in the world is, is what they're... That's what they're yes. fighting. Not that the non-woke people are any better. We just have to get that straight. 
that's a whole for a whole nother discussion. But the, in terms of the identifiably identifying groups that are blatantly I'm the millennial of Kali Sado, people are marching in colleges in Columbia University, they're saying, you know, wipe the Jews off the face of the earth for the river to the sea. And then they accuse us, of course, of, of genocide. So that to me is the, is the Seder night. A successful Seder is where we become a lot more connected to our identity as, as Yidin who are the Amma Nifhar, chosen by Hashem. Not living a random life, chosen by HaKadosh Baruch Hu for a mission. And if you know that you're chosen for a mission, all the pain goes away, all the suffering goes away, because you know you're on a mission, you know why you're experiencing it. The mission is... To represent a Kaddish Baruch Hu in the world, bring the presence of Hashem into the world. That's why it's so hard to be a secular Jew, because there's no meaning to anti-Semitism. You can't solve it and there's no meaning. So it's like suffering without meaning. I mean, it's a Victor Frankl, you know. You need purpose and there's no purpose in it. <coughs> it's just random suffering. It's like some genetic flaw in the human, in the human, human beings that they just for some reason don't like Jews, and you happen to be a Jew, so you're better off not being a Jew. The simplest answer for anti-Semitism for the non-religious person is to not 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 identify himself as Jewish, hide your Judaism. And that's what they did. That's what they did in every generation, well, which led to most assimilation and most most people leaving. As I, I uh, just saw a great clip where the guy says, you know, someone asked why there's so many Jewish communists. He said, if the Tsar would have treated you like he treated the Jews, he'd also you you to become communist. It wasn't a it wasn't a question that seemingly there was a lot better. It took tremendous strength for a Jew to say, you know, I don't want to be a communist. You think of how much gavur that would have taken. Somebody's coming and promising you. You have no stake in capitalism because there is no capitalism. Everybody's a serf. Everybody's an avid. And uh, somebody comes up and he says, hey, you know what? I have a new model of life, and it's gonna, everything's going to be beautiful. Everybody's going to be equal, and everybody wonderful. And social, your social status, you'll be accepted. And then you see Jews join the movement, and they're, they were accepted. So you say, wow, this is amazing. The, the czar hates us, and these people like us. So all that's <clears throat> sort of my hakdama to what I think is the essential difference of Pesach from every other yontif. And there is an essential difference. <clears throat> I know we've spoken about this before. But what's the fundamental difference between Judaism and the West today from, a, from, an, from an ideas point of view? What's the, what's the basic difference between the purpose of life as defined by the Jews Versus that defined by the West. I mean, the rabbi said many times, our mission is to is to spread God's light. And what stops us from spreading God's light? It's easy. Being in chains. We have we have Yitzhar. We have an Hashem. We have a God. So Judaism's premise is that every human being is in absolute conflict with himself. And you're talkless in life, but Yisim Kelekim, the Nachash tells Adam Rishim, you want to become like Hashem, your real talkless in life is to become as close to Hashem as you can by making yourself the most similar. <laughs> to rework yourself. To emulate. To emulate a Kaddish Baruch. How big am I And <clears throat> we, our premises, you come into Earth, you're essentially a baby. What's a baby? Baby is the most self-centered human being possible. A guy could be dying in the room, baby does nothing. You can have a three-year-old toddler, somebody could be dying in the room, baby doesn't care. He just wants his bottle, he wants his diaper. Just selfish. Almost psychopathically selfish, if you think of children. They really don't care about anything. But as we start to grow up, we grow in awareness, we go into the world around us, there's existence around us, and we become aware of the greater world that exists beyond our own immediate needs. But the two always stay in conflict. Since the two are always in conflict, 
it doesn't have to be major conflict. It can be the lady cutting you off at the corner, or you cutting off, which we spoke about. You cutting off the guy at the corner, or letting the person ahead of you, or, or writing a charitable check. But it's basically all negation of your own needs, because you want to be like a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You want to become like a Kaddish Baruch Hu. So our premise of life is that we are the Amanifhar. We're meant to bring Hashem into the world. The only way we could do that is by conquering the Eight Sahara. So you've got to conquer the Eight Sahara. And everyone has the Eight Sahara. So instead of concentrating on the other guy's Eight Sahara, we're not, we're not so interested in that. Obviously, the Chiyav, whatever, Techacha, but that's not what life's about. Life's not about conquering the other guy's Eight Sahara. It's not about fixing the world. You being an example. It's about you conquering Yetzirah. And every person recognizes they have a Yetzirah because only you can conquer your own Yetzirah. Nobody can conquer the other guy's Yetzirah for him. We know that that's impossible. So you can't make another person better. It's, 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 it's by definition impossible. You cannot improve the moral condition of another human being. You can only improve your own moral condition. So our belief in life is this is what we do. Is we are focused on refining ourselves so that our souls dominate and not our bodies dominate. The West, how does the West look at life? So we'll divide it into Christians and non-Christians. Non-Christians, they don't believe there's a Yei Sahar. So what you want, what you feel is right. I feel I'm a man today, I'm a woman, I want to I wanna be gay, I want animals, whatever I want. What I, what I want... Say that again, non-Christians. Non-Christians, non they, there's no Yetzirah, Yetzirah. Human being is essentially a good human being. We spoke about this before. A human being is good, we spoke about it last week. The premise is human beings are good people. They're good people. No one has Yetzirah. A non-Christian... Would, would uh, uh, somebody they would agree that murder is wrong? We're going to get to murder. We get to moral. Most moral code is just a way of survival. I mean, any Economic, economically, anybody will tell you that because society has to function. Yeah. society needs a set of rules, but it's all it's yeah. all in the so gather of doing. Right. But, but but that, that's Alleged. why that's why suicide is acceptable in, in the Netherlands. You know, there's a system suicide. suicide. But now it's not even for Chaylam. If you stop, you want to kill yourself. You do assisted suicide. I didn't know that. I thought it was only for Chaylam. No, not there was a big. There was an article last week how this healthy young woman who's super yeah, yeah, depressed. Yeah, she wanted to die. And she's going through yeah, assisted You don't need a medical reason. If no, you but want she has a medical you. reason. But I didn't know you don't need, yeah, you don't need, you don't need a You don't need a physical defect in the Netherlands to kill yourself. But mental, you do. Meaning, I don't, that I don't know. I'm meaning, not, say, can I walk into a doctor? And say, I'm not I a maven in the laws of the go, Netherlands. You can go. Yes, you can go. Just make sure don't make any flights to Netherlands in the next few weeks. Well, yeah, yeah, well, 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 murder is nothing because of, you see, sati, sati, sati. Right. It's it's whatever it is, what it is. Right. So, no, it, outside of Christianity, that's your belief. But out, outside of Christianity, there is no real belief that human beings have an evil side to them. That's meant to be restrained. So, a woman, for example, there's no reason why she can't walk into the classroom completely provocatively dressed. Because, why not? There's no notion that it's serious. It doesn't exist. And then if you say something, they get mad. And if an airplane, airplanes are closed quarters, so the stewardess says to the lady, you're dressed inappropriately, you can't come on the plane. It's a whole media's out. Who do you think you are? You can't tell me what to do. So the idea of moral restraint, see the Greeks had a notion of moral restraint, <clears throat> especially in Sparta. Um, the Stoics they had idea of the nobility of man through, through restraint. But in the West today, there's no notion of moral restraint. It doesn't exist. So it's what you feel, and if you feel it, that makes it right. And if I feel I'm this, I'm that, and the, and the ultimate Freedom level, you have people in Trank all over Philadelphia, no one cares because it's what you want. If you want, if you decide that you want to leave civilized society and, and be a drug addict in the street and, and sell your body, like, who cares? No, no one has a right to tell you what to do. 
Christians have a more complex problem. They actually believe in sin. So they believe that there's something wrong with human beings. But they gave up. Vicarious so redemption. Huh? They, believe, they, gave, they gave up. It doesn't work. There's no way to be... All the way to conquer is through faith. So you can be a hunt, but as long as you have faith, you're okay. You believe everything is good. You don't have to do chuba, nothing. You don't have to do chuba. No, no. You can kill someone, you're good. So that's why the Nazis were able to make compat set compatibility with Christianity, is you have faith. And there are some variations in between Anabaptists, Baptists, the Amish. I, I, I studied this just a little bit, between how exactly they believe, how far faith goes and all that. But fundamentally, the idea of a, let's call it the following. You ready? A program of lifetime self-refinement does not exist. So we believe in a program of lifetime self-refinement. They do not because it doesn't work. So to have a better idea, you have faith in Yashka. He died for you and, and all, all your sins are forgiven. You, you told me they didn't have sperm like the Missouri No, no, no. They, they, not only that, in the Middle Ages, they used to sell indulgences. So the priest would sell, if you wanted to commit an or whatever, you, got, you bought an indulgence. The Vatican, they, they wanted to raise money then. But still, but... Hey, Rabbi, sorry, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm interjecting over here. Um, Shabbos is living in a few minutes. So, have a great Shabbos, Kebra. Totally. Thank you, Ken Kambar. Beautiful thank Shabbos. You thank you, Shadili, for changing your schedule. Have a beautiful Shabbos. Thank you, Rabbi, for the speech. Thank you. Enjoy, Tully. Mr. Pesach, we don't see you before. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's true, so... Totally, as, as you hang up, one fast thought. Pesach is the one Yom Tif where we are dealing with external struggle. And that's, you have the notion of power, external Ra. We'll talk about that more once you get off the phone. But Pesach is the idea that, in other words, all year long we tell ourselves, be a Baal Musa, be a Baal, be a Baal Chassid, work on yourselves, Lifetime program of self-refinement. And the Goyim, they don't believe in that. And what do they do instead? They're busy trying to fix the world. They're, why are they demonstrating in Colombia? We're going to fix the world. We're going to fix the other bad. He's bad. We're not bad. He's bad. And virtue signaling, I'm good because I'm demonstrating against the bad guy. It's all external. Pace is the once a year where we do focus on external evil. Because it does matter. It actually does matter. And it matters because ideas matter. Where is the focus on the external? Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim was, an, Mitzrayim was an external environment of Ra. We fall, but even though we fall, it doesn't take us all the way down because our essence is not Ra. We have a Ra in us, but we fall. But we're dealing with Paro and Mitzrayim, and there's this whole, the whole juxtaposition of Moshe Rabbeinu against Paro, and Kla Yisrael against Mitzrayim. is this whole... The whole framing of Pesach is us against against the Mitzrayim, us against evil. When will the Mitzrayim bend? It's not about what did you do today. Kamara, can you record it? Kamara, can you record it? It's being recorded. He's recording it. Go totally. Have a beautiful All right. Shabbos. All right. All right. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. So on Pesach is the once a year where we say, you know what? You know, of course Judaism is about your internal lifetime program of self-refinement. The only way the true measure of a human being is to measure how he, much he has refined himself. That's the measure. If you're 70 years old and you're no more refined than when you're 60, if you're 60, you're no more refined than you're 40, it's Achidvei. So life is about this lifetime program of self-refinement. But on Pesach, we're not so focused on that. See, Sukkot, even though Sukkot is the relationship with Hashem, Anani Covid, we're just going to bask in the relationship. Sukkot is almost like a motivator. Like, it's going to motivate us. If you spend time with Hashem, look how that's going to inspire you and connect you and elevate you and all. Shavu is about Kabbalah Satyra, accepting the lifetime program of self-refinement. So in Shavu we say, you know what? We got to accept this lifetime program of self refinement called the tire. If you don't have that, you're done. Sukkot is about basking in the Nanya Kavit, appreciating the atmosphere, appreciating the spirituality, the connection. But Pesach is this whole conflict juxtaposition 
between Moshe and Parai, the Jews and the Egyptians, Hashem and, 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 and a world that doesn't recognize him, and trying to force the world to yield to the power of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And why is that so important if Judaism is about an internal program? At the end of the day, ideas do matter. Re ideas, the ideas that the world operates on, they come from somewhere. People created ideas. The Rambam talks about it, the Hirsch talks about it. The people created ideas that are bad ideas. And they mislead human beings into falsehood. The Rambam talks about the false priests. And they lead people into, into, into falseness. And there are atmospheres in societies that are bad. And we were taken from that world of darkness. But the framework, the whole framework of the Makis is really about, look at, look at this. It's a cosmic battle. It's not an internal battle. It's a battle between Hashem and Pari. Who's stronger? Who's going to win? Is Pari going to yield? Is he going to accept Hashem? Who cares if Pari accepts Hashem? What does Pari do with me? I'm living here in Lakewood in 2024 with my kids and grandkids, my community, my friends. Who cares if Pari does or doesn't accept the Kaddish Baruch Hu? So, the one time here where we know, we say, wait a minute, this stuff really does matter. It's not the focus of Judaism, because our focus is the program of lifetime self-refinement. But on, on Pesach, we recognize the world we live in. We recognize where we came from. We recognize who we became, that we became Jews. We became the Amma Nifchar. And the world will be oppositional. Behold, started with love and decided to wipe us out. History will not change. And the Amma Nifchar have a special role in the world. And you have a sense of the role that we're playing on the world stage. How timely that is for now, when Israel's in the front page of the news, how ironic it is that Israel can influence U.S. elections. Who would have imagined? There's Jews are one quarter, one percent of the world. Right? But Jews have always been at the center stage of history. You think it's just now? In World War II, the Jews were not at the center stage. Of course they were. The Croatian United Nations, of course they were. And so many other times. They were, they were. They were. The United Nations? The United Nations was created in reaction to the Holocaust. That we can't allow people, nations... Till, till the Holocaust. Style and everything. There was nothing to do yeah, it. but till the Holocaust, it wasn't for Stalin. Till the no, Holocaust, was, yeah. there was a principle of non interference in the internal affairs of other countries. So the rule was nation states. Nation state concept arose over a few hundred years. You do not interfere with the nation state how they treat their people. And then the world said, you know what? Enough of this. The Jews. The, 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 whole, the whole Zach. The Jews. It, it wasn't. It wasn't the whole Zach. I mean, you're not going. You're, what you're saying is. Maybe it sounds else. nice, but it's not historically accurate. I don't mean to be because of the Jews. Yeah, the ho not the Jews, the Holocaust. If such a terrible thing could happen, and it did not happen because of Stalin, Stalin did the same thing earlier. In words. Much worse. Yeah, I don't know, worse, better, it's all the same. Killed, but, you know, killed 30 million people, right? right? But this idea that you're going to wipe a nation off the face of the earth was like so stark. The world said, you know, we need. So we've always been at the center stage of history. It doesn't mean everything that happens directly can be attributable to us. But certainly, certainly at the center of, uh, of major events of, of human existence. Because that's our role as Jews. So I kind of look at internal versus external. All year long we're on the internal side, becoming Eved Hashem, becoming Eved Hashem. We don't care about the world. Who cares? The power, this, that, Hamas. Not negated to us. And then once a year, we're like, no, you know what? We're going to focus where we came from. That the Jews are always in an environment where there's a struggle between Jew and non-Jew. And the, the world is oppositional to it. Kal Yisrael is a Kevis ben Shivim Zevim. And that, that is the nature of our mission in life. <coughs> it is to be the representative of a Kaddish Baruch in the world. And could be that's why we never got to the Nia Shari Tim, because it was... End of the day, even though it was Memtes, it was the internal issue was bad, right. but he never allowed us. The internal issue wasn't the reason for us staying there. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that that the essence of the of, of the Jew has a refined soul, because 
the others had a relationship with Hashem. So you that could not that could not be allowed to descend into the Memtes Shari I mean, you could overwhelm anybody. You know, you torture anybody enough, he's going to give up all, all his secrets out. Right? You waterboard someone enough, he's going to, he's going to fold. You put him in enough tumma, he's going to fold. But Akash Barkha has this relationship with us where ultimately he's not going to let us down.